Hi, this is Professor Scott Norman in the Automotive Lab at Pittsburgh State University, and this is another AC lesson. Today we're working on a 1999 Ford Ranger with an orifice tube AC system. The vehicle is fully warmed up and it's blowing about 40 degree air, 39, 40 degree air. We are doing a performance test on it. And right now the shop temperature is 68 degrees, 28% humidity, it's about 41 degrees outside. And the problem that we're having right now is that we can't get the vehicle warm enough uh, in order to stop the AC from cycling. So if you notice, what you're seeing right now is the AC is cycling on and off, on and off. There's just not enough heat load on the vehicle to keep the AC running continuously. So a couple things we can do to try to solve this problem. Right now, the doors and windows are closed. So we're gonna open up the doors and windows to try to give it a little bit better heat load. Another thing we could do is that, um, uh, is that we could put a fender cover over the, um, the air going through the uh, condenser and maybe that will raise up the pressure just enough so it stops cycling. So let's try to turn off the, uh, or I'm sorry, let's try to open the, um, the doors and windows first and then let's see if that helps out or not. Okay, so right now the doors and windows are open and we're gonna take a look at the system and we're gonna see if it is still cycling or not. So there it just cycled, looks like it's just cycled on. We're gonna kind of look at it, see what it's cycling from. Pay attention to when it cycles off. Does it cycle off at 24 PSI, 23 PSI, 22 PSI? That's something that's kind of important. Also, when does it cycle back on again? Does it cycle back on at 39 PSI, 40 PSI, 41 PSI? Every vehicle is a little bit different on that and the specs for this particular vehicle, so you wanna make sure it's cycling on and off at the correct time. You wanna make sure that someone has it adjusted the screw. Sometimes those cycling clutch switches has a screw on it where somebody will adjust it, will adjust it too cold. Too cold. Now, um, it looks like it's still cycling a little bit, so um, so opening and closing the doors, I'm sorry, opening the doors did not solve the problem. So uh, let's put it on uh, fresh air and let's see if that helps out a little bit. Okay, so now we have it on fresh air underneath uh, the, uh, the hood. It's probably at least 100 degrees under the hood. Uh, this car is not fully warmed up. Again, I, uh, um, I, um, I keep grabbing the upper radiator hose and the, the upper radiator hose still feels warm. So again, I'm, I'm just having enough, uh, I'm having a hard time building up enough heat under the hood in order to make this thing uh, as hot as I would like it for a normal uh, test, I'm, I'm gonna say that. So now I have, again, this 100 degree air going into the cow area because, uh, because the hood's open. So then that's giving it enough of a heat load in order to uh, stop it from cycling. So now I can kind of take a better reading as far as what my high side reading is and my low side reading is. It's a little bit more consistent. Next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna turn the AC off and we're gonna look at the equalization time on this vehicle to see if it's too fast, if it's too uh, short. So we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna watch how long it takes the system to equalize. Okay, so this is a normal system. It's working just fine. So we're, we're kind of looking at what is normal equalization time. And we're taking a look at the gauge readings and seeing what's going on. If, if you're really quiet and listen under the hood, you can hear the hissing sound of the high pressure, low pressure equalizing inside the AC system through the, um, through the, uh, the fixed orifice tube. And again, you can take a look at, I'm gonna turn around to the front to see what we currently have. So right now, you know, we're at about 50, 55 PSI, and this guy is a little bit above 70, and it is moving up, moving up, and I'm gonna say maybe less than a minute, I would expect it to equalize. You know, this is below 75 right now. This is at 60. So we're looking at just a few more seconds in order for it to fully equalize out. We can play back the video and we can see exactly how long it took to equalize. But you know, typically an orifice tube system, 20 seconds to maybe a minute. If it was five minutes, you know, I would be worried about there maybe being, being a restriction somewhere in the system. Uh, maybe, maybe that fixed orifice tube is restricting. 
This is Scott Norman from Pittsburgh State University. If you want more videos, uh, you could look at my Professor Pintain YouTube channel or you could follow me on Facebook for Professor Pintain for more automotive videos. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.